we've got Lindsay Pearson gracing us <laughs> with your presence. You're very busy. It's true, it's true. But this is important, and I love coming to talk about yeah. the game. Uh, so do you want to tell people like who you are around The Sims? Because I yeah. think you've been much more public-facing in the past, maybe not as much now, so maybe some people don't know what yeah. you do. Yeah, for sure. So um, my background with The Sims is I've actually been with The Sims for about 16 years now, mm -hmm. and I actually started as a tester. I actually got to play a lot of the early first Sims 1's packs, and then I moved into production, and now my job is the general manager for the franchise. So how much veto power do you have? If someone's like, <laughs> someone's like, I want to do this, and you're like, no! Yeah, not as much as you'd think, right? Okay. So, like, my favorite version of that is, um, that I tell everyone, is we, the laundry stuff that everybody voted for. Okay. I absolutely told Graham I would never let us do laundry unless people told me that's what they wanted. And then they're like, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. We'll, we'll do a poll and we'll see. Exactly. And so Graham was like, fine, we're going to vote on it. And I was like, okay. And then, of course, it wins. And I was like, all right, well, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> and it's one of everyone's favorite packs. Absolutely. So. And I'm super happy, actually, yeah, to be yeah. proven wrong. I love to learn new things about what people want and expect cool. from the game, which is great. When you decided that you wanted to be part of this, you asked me, you were like, okay, I'm ready to do some hard-hitting questions. Yes. Which I think you may regret a little bit. <laughs> no, no, but it'll be great. We'll, we'll see how we go. So I asked my audience what they wanted to know. So I've got a bunch of their questions here. Uh, they were all voted on. Like, So these are all like the top questions. Okay. And I've rephrased some of them because obviously we can't ask. Well, you know what? Let's ask the first question. Okay. People want to know, are we getting more stairs or cars or university, supernaturals, witches, you know, Sims 5? Oh, there are so many things I would love to be able to talk about, but None of I cannot comment on most of that, <laughs> exactly. um, obviously. Which I think most of you guys know. You guys, I, I understand. I want to know, too. Like, I want to ask all these questions, but that's not something that... Especially, we're not going to reveal it here on my channel. Why would it be here? <laughs> Don't look here for that. A question from Prividen. And they said, what inspired you to create packs like Strangerville? And like, what, was that one sort of influenced from any previous things you've done in The Sims? Or is it just something you're like, let's try something new, something different? That's a really good question. Um, for Strangerville in particular, it really was the team wanted to try something different. Mm -hmm. So we had a chance to say, okay, what's, what's our next game pack going to be? And uh, there was a lot of brainstorming and a lot of proposals. And they were like, hey, let's try and put a little more story. Let's try and see how people feel about that. There's a desire to try different play styles. And so we were like, hey, well, what could that look like? Uh, and I remember conversations with the designers where they're like, oh, we're going to put some stuff in there that may not feel like Sims. And I was like, go for it. Let's see what happens, right? <laughs> let's try it out. Which I think, like, me personally, I was one of the people like, I don't know if I want a whole story in the game. And I, because I always love the story spin-offs. Like, I yes. love that kind of idea. Yeah. But the really interesting thing was, I did a whole video about it. You guys know it, obviously, uh, where I, you know, express my opinion. Then there's some really smart and, like, articulate comments down below yeah. for and against that. So I was like, there's a lot of, obviously, different ways you can look at it. Um, and there's no one right answer. In it. No, actually, that's what's been super cool. Is like, ever since we even teased it, and that whole day we all went crazy, um, <laughs> which was really fun. Yeah. It's been really neat to follow the conversation of people, not only speculating what it might be yeah. or how it might play, but just, oh, what does this mean? How, how might this change how I play the game? What might I do with it? Um, it was really good question. So I actually was really pleased that it prompted a totally different type of discussion. I just want to go back a little bit because I just want everyone to know how much of a Sims fan you are. Oh, yeah. Like going way <laughs> back. Like what was, what, what's your first experience of the Sims? Because you, she's not just stepped into this role no, out of no, nowhere. No. You love the Sims. You, this is what you uh, yeah this what is what you want to be this is you yeah so when i first first played the first first sims right uh it was at my friend's house and uh in the first 10 minutes of course it did what the sims do is i went in and i had my sim try and make breakfast and they caught fire and they died like yep. instantly <laughs> and i was like oh okay i don't understand anything about this game <laughs> but um i came back to it because i was like well i was curious and uh the first pack i really got into was hot date and taking my sims yep. on dates downtown and it was just so interesting to me. I actually got into modding a little bit. I made oh, yeah. skins for my characters back in Sims 1. I did some of that. When I started at EA and I was working in testing, I had a friend working on The Sims and they were like, don't tell them you love The Sims. They'll just make you install it forever. And I was like, but I do love The Sims. But I want to <laughs> like, do it. So I put it on my list, like at the bottom and they were like, oh good, you can go be on The Sims. And it's just so cool. Like it was great, first of all, as a fan to be able to see stuff early. But then I just really loved how how we work with the community, we work with mm. each other, and just the culture of Maxis and the culture of The Sims has just been so creative. I still go play The Sims. I love The Sims. Um, I actually have a bunch of custom content in my game at home because, you know, we haven't made all the stuff I want yet. Yeah. <laughs> so. that, that's actually something people ask a lot of, like, not just you, but the whole team is, like, do you guys use, like, mods and custom content? Mm -hmm. Which I think a lot of people around the office do. Some might not. Like, yeah. It's not 
Some, there's no rule about it. They're allowed to use it. Yeah, you know? it's, it's one of the things I love best about the game, that it actually can be turned into so yeah. many different things. And um, I am so inspired by the stuff that we see created, which constantly drives me to ask our team, like, why haven't we done this thing, right? But also just, I can go find what I want, too, mm-hmm. as, as a player. Um, I like, The team was amused when I told them that I had... I get codes for all the packs, right? We yeah. get to play what we played. Wait, you don't have to buy them? I don't have to buy them. Oh, controversy. I know, I'm sorry. But <laughs> I was home on a weekend one afternoon, and I realized I had put two of my codes on my like um, work account instead of my home account. No. And I was like, no! And I actually <laughs> bought the packs I was missing because I just yeah. could not stand. I could not let that stand. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we kind of briefly spoke about Laundry Day stuff and the whole voting yeah. thing. And it's actually been quite a common theme, people wanting to know if that's going to happen again, if that's something you guys yeah. have considered. Because I think... From everyone, we can probably tell that that was a very successful pack. Like, yes, yeah. And that's something people are interested in, you know, that kind of level of input again. Absolutely. I was really happy with how that ended up going. I think yeah. Graham and the team did a great job in setting up the whole process of the, how the voting went, how we surfaced the information. He worked really closely with uh, with everyone to get that done. So I definitely want to do it again. I don't know when that might yeah. be, yeah, but yeah. it's a thing that we care about a lot. And it may not look exactly the same. Like, we might decide to you know, try a different tack for how we might vote, so. Yeah, cool. And then people also wanted to know, like, I guess, so Laundry Day was chosen by us, but they wanted to know how you guys pick, you know, the initial idea for something. What's that sort of, you know, how do you think, oh, this is what we should do before this, or that won't work? Yeah. Well, some of it, there's a lot of aspects, right? So some of it is, what do we know that people want to be able to do in life, which seems crazy broad, but there's a few things we know um, yeah. people will want. Um, cats and dogs, for example. Mm-hmm. Something we knew that we always wanted to do. And so there's these aspects of life that we kind of have a list of that we want to make sure that we get to at some point. Some of which we mentioned at the start. <laughs> yes. We'll not be talking so about So I can't again. talk about what any of them are specifically. Um, but we also look at the feedback that we see online all the time. Yeah. So we look at what people are streaming and talking about and in the forums and on Twitter. Uh, we sometimes do surveys. I know those have circulated online where you see different themes. And sometimes those have kind of crazy stuff in them on purpose because we want to gauge what people think about. Do people about. actually want crazy stuff? Right. It's do you want like the, the more the more out there themes or do you want yeah. some more normal themes? And how do we balance that? So it's kind of a little combo of all of it. I think on that point, it's really interesting to note. Like, I think there's this culture around The Sims that if I buy into it, I have to buy every pack. So yeah. there's almost a, like, I didn't want that pack. I yeah. wanted a different one. It's like... Which is really, I'm, I'm the same, honestly, like, and for, from every Sims, I bought every single pack, but I think, especially with The Sims 4, and even, even with The Sims 3 in the store and that, there was much more of, he has lots of stuff, mm-hmm. you don't necessarily, have, like, have to get everything, yeah. because we're trying to give people what they want, but I don't think you need, a, you don't have to buy something you don't like, you know, yeah. as simple as that, but it, it's got that really interesting culture around it, I think, and that's why people get so passionate about yeah the particular about one the it's a really good point because just like i said i had to complete my collection i wanted all the packs if i've got an icon grayed out <laughs> i'm not happy but like when you guys update the game and there's the new icon there and i can't get it yet yeah yeah oh it, but it's funny because i i feel the same way like the the intention behind us doing these disparate themes is because we know people yes. might like one and not the other and that's totally okay right which makes um, sense but psychologically we want all yeah, of them but it's, it's a really even if i don't thing. want it i want it you know i actually don't <laughs> even know how many players have all of them like i don't i don't know yeah. that yet we're I, i'm very curious mm-hmm. so. Oh, another popular one, because this kind of ties into another question I had as well about, uh, because The Sims 4 has been, I think, much more limited in terms of the lots that we have, like the number of lots. Obviously, previously on Sims 3, we could add new lots, even the same with The Sims 2. So every time a new world comes, we're pretty excited to see what kind of lots we get. Yeah. And then there's been the sort of trend of smaller and smaller worlds. So we were just wondering if there was, you know, you'd consider doing another empty world, because it was briefly explained that... New worlds obviously bring new sims yep. and more more detail, and that's kind of adding to, I guess, the bulk of the game as kind of performance limitations in some cases. Yeah, that's um, it's a complicated one for that reason, right? Yeah, well, even me describing it then, that's so boring. You <laughs> might have tuned out. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it, so there is, I mean, just across the board, there's always more we want to do that mm-hmm. we can't quite do for lots of different reasons. Um, not even just it's too hard, but it's a lot usually you know, some prioritization and some sometimes performance concerns. Um, we we are one of those few games that still runs on pretty old machines, right? Like, you can have a pretty low-spec machine. like anything. <laughs> yeah, which is kind of incredible. Not a lot of games do that. But that means we have to think about that when we think about what we are putting into yeah. the world. Uh, so it's partially why you see it's never as many lots as we feel like we could shove in there, right? Or it's never as big a house as we feel like we want to build because we're trying to balance that with what we know we may want to do down the line so that we don't sort of do too much of it up front and then make the game kind of just fall apart. Yeah. Um, maybe that's a slight exaggeration, I, but... 
And I think that's kind of where I guess it's a little bit upsetting from a player perspective that we can't just add our own lots because yeah. then obviously it would be our choice to yeah. ruin our own game, not yours, you know? Yeah. So that's why, that, I think that's kind of where that whole discussion like comes from because we can't add more lots and then yeah. we're limited from what we have. And Well, and some of that had to do with sort of decisions that we made on how the worlds were built, right? Absolutely, how they're 100% existed. different, I know. Totally. I, like, I get it. But I'm still upset by it. You know, yeah, like, I, like, I totally like understand. That's how it is. And when we talk about that and we say, like, well, we, we know why we did what we did, but if we were to think about it again, what would we have done differently, right? Mm. Like, how would we have reintroduced more flexibility to the yeah. way that we offered the And modes? I just want to note as well, kind of related to the whole performance thing, this game is nearly five years old. Yeah. Play The Sims 3 at five years old. <laughs> like, just please, with everything installed. That game was, I think, done by the fifth year. Like, it was... Uh, it was getting close, if it wasn't already. I, was, I can't remember the timing off the top of my head. It was roughly a five-year span of that game, yeah. and, it is, and it recommends you don't load all packs if you have no. Now, yeah, so, I remember um, writing the blurb that said, please don't do this. I don't so, think it'll work out. So I think that's also, that's also <laughs> an important bit of context, I think, with some of this kind of stuff is this yeah. is... You know. But you summed it up well, which is like, I understand why it's not there, but that doesn't mean I still don't want it. <laughs> but I don't agree with it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. So this this is actually a pretty important point for the community. Okay. Um, so they're asking, this is Emily asking, where does the team mainly look for consumer feedback? It seems mm -hmm. like a lot of the time, some smaller things might have been seen, but not necessarily heard. Like there's always like little, like this is those little sort of bits and pieces here and there. Maybe we wanted a plain white door in right. Delhi's case. She always asked for that. <laughs> I mean, I want it too. That wasn't on the wish list she gave me, to be fair. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, like all these little things that sometimes it feels like it's not being heard. And I want to know if there's a way, there's a good way about, uh, you know, going about voicing what yeah. they want. Well, we get, we actually track so much more of that feedback than I think that you guys might realize because we do read, we all have a lot of gurus on Twitter. They all have lots of different followers and people that we're talking to. We have people on Reddit. We have people on the forums. Um, so we're getting that feedback from a lot of places and uh, we do track a ton of it internally. Like if you were to talk to someone like SimGuru Gnome, he has a list of a million things that we want to work on and we kind of work on chipping away at it slowly but surely. But the thing to keep in mind is that it's really... Um, it is hard to see the thing that you care about not be addressed, right? Because you're like, but I've talked about this everywhere. I've told everybody and tons of people agree with me. But our audience is so broad and so wide that for every mm. every one of those for you, someone else feels the same way about theirs. And so how we're always looking at lots of that and trying to evaluate how we go after it. And um, I know that's not the best answer, but but it is a balancing act. And we're always trying to look yeah, at Yeah, I mean, there's, there's not like a cue that I can just be like, okay, I'll add that to the end of the list. Yeah, and then yeah. we'll get to it in yeah. a little while. And, and, and it doesn't, you know, it doesn't really, we can't quantify it as easily. It's not like, um, it's not like every single issue has a poll for it that is tracked for every single person that plays the game. So it's, yeah. it's really hard to quantify how it impacts everyone because it, is all these, all these different groups and talking about it. Yeah, and I think on the point of like feedback and talking about worlds, one of the things lately has been there's all these like really interesting objects in the world yeah. uh, from even decorative cars to like new plants and all this kind of stuff that we can never get. Like, and modders will go in and just sort of give it to us. Like, and we're just kind of wondering why that's not something that we you know, we even get access to. Yeah, game that's a good question. So, like, on one hand, um, and Kate probably wouldn't want me to say this, like, I actually didn't even know how many of those things weren't in the catalog. Because when <laughs> we talk about it, we were like, hey, we should give everybody everything that we possibly can. So yeah. I asked about that after sort of some more recent conversation happening online, and uh, the team was looking into it. And Antonio talked about this bit online, Sim Guru Romeo, was that we, we actually develop some of these objects in totally different parts of the team, and they don't always get surfaced to the producers or um, to even the, the uh, like localization, like tracking what has text, right? So it meant that sometimes we don't even know that they're there mm -hmm. because they were just built into the world and we didn't catch it. Um, that said, we, we are digging into it and figuring out if there's a way we can give access to them. Um, and I know Antonio explained that they're built a little differently. They have some different rules sometimes. Yeah. But I totally understand that it's just a... Uh, it's more tools to use, right? More pieces. Yeah, to it's, like, it's like I can see it. Why can't I just pick it up? And yeah, move totally, it totally. Uh, so we're looking at that because uh, that's yeah. a totally fair question. And our intention is certainly to share as many tools and as many pieces with you as we can. So it, it is not that we intentionally said hide those things. It's just that they kind of slip through the cracks. Yeah. And we need to figure out a better way to catch them. And it, it's because it's kind of a shame. Like even though modders release it all, like if yeah. I wanted to use it, then it counts as custom content, even though it's right. already in the game. And that's, that's like that's not the goal. It's a bit of a shame. Right? So we want to figure out a way yeah, to make sure cool. that that's not the case. The Sims uh, is always always like from way back in The Sims One. 
where they showed uh, a couple kissing on screen, I think, at E3. Uh, I think, was it two male Sims or two? Uh, I don't know. It was two, either two male or two female Sims. It was way back in the Sims 1 days. I think it was before it was even out. So it's always, The Sims has been at the forefront of inclusivity, basically. Yes. It's never been something that you want to hold back or shy away from. And the gender update, uh, two years ago now, I think, yeah, it was I something think it was about like two that. Summers, yeah. yeah, like that really showed that. And people just want to know if there's other things that you're thinking about that you want, that you would like to see in the game to, like, you know, increase that. Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, yeah, there are a lot of different angles we would love to go after, and it's a matter of trying to find the right way to do it. So mm -hmm. the gender update is a really good example. We actually worked with a group um, called GLAD, if you haven't heard of them, uh, on how to appropriately represent what mm -hmm. we were trying to do. And that was a lot of good conversation and a lot of good um, partnership to figure out a way to present it that felt appropriate for The Sims, but also respectful of what we were trying yeah. to do. So there are a lot of those going at any given time of how can we tackle different issues of inclusivity and diversity. Over the last year or so, we've gone more into adding more cultures into the game. Now I know it's been through some smaller elements, right? Our Lunar New Year pack was some good cultural content. Uh, what we did with Diwali a bit back was really good. The Caribbean pack was really great because it adds a lot of pieces that feel like they aren't just sort of normal suburban life yeah. stuff, uh, which I, is important. I, don't know. I think it's really important as well that it's, you know, these are all sort of free content updates. I almost feel like if it was in a pack, it's like, oh, why do I have to buy yeah. to play me, you know, yeah. my culture and experience that kind of thing. Yeah. So I think that's really a great thing. That's and happening. that's why we do that. And we, we spread them out because we, we are they are things we want to be able to give away for free. And we can't do that all at once and just give it all away at the same time. So we have to sort of just keep, um, keep moving forward on that front. But it's something we talk about all the time. It is something that is a core value of The Sims and is super important. And I really appreciate the very thoughtful conversations that I've seen people having yeah. about what yeah. they would like to see next, how we could do it. Um, I really appreciate those ideas. Yeah. And I guess, speaking of inclusivity, there's been a lot of conversation lately about babies and their gameplay being included. But not just babies, <laughs> elders as well. Because right. I think The Sims 4 almost has, not so much now with children, because parenthood sort of helped out with that a yeah. little bit, but gameplay associated mostly with young adults and, you know, teens and that yeah. currently. It kind of yeah. it kind of seems like the beginning of the game, the end of the game, there's <laughs> not a lot going on there. So people want to know if that's something you guys have also noticed and something that you're thinking about. Yeah. No, absolutely. So you asked me about how much veto power I get, but no <laughs> one actually gets to make, like, any particular call because yeah. we're doing a lot of evaluation. So I am also in the camp of, like, please do something with babies immediately. <laughs> and uh, Grant, Grant talks about it a lot with me and tells me no. Um, that doesn't mean we won't Throwing get Throwing him under the bus. Yeah, exactly. Sorry. Um, to be fair, I say no to him too, so <laughs> it's not really under the bus. But um, so absolutely. And I think that each of us have sort of that particular area we really want to see developed more. I have two kids. I have two little girls. Mm -hmm. I would love to see more gameplay for babies and for little kids um, because you always want to recreate the things that you're doing. Yeah. And so I think it it's going to fall into that same camp that I feel like I've said, and I know people won't want me to repeat, of like, we're always evaluating where we could do it and where we could do it appropriately. I think it's good to hear that the answer isn't no. No, like, no, I'm just gonna definitely. Say, I'm just going to say that now because obviously a lot of these things that we're going to be talking about are going to be like, yeah, we thought about it, we don't yeah. know yet. But as long as it's not like, no, we're never doing that, yeah. I think that's probably a good, like that's that's what <laughs> is nice to hear, you know. Yeah, but it's on I'm, the table. And, you know, well, like discussed. you said, we made Parenthood. We made a pack specifically of additional toddler content Which, after giving out Best toddlers. game pack by far. Parenthood? Yeah, yeah, it's wonderful. It. And it's it was, a, it was a great game pack. And it did really well, too. I will say, I also... I, I never really played Generations in The Sims 3. It yeah. was, it's not my game, it's not my style of gameplay, but Parenthood, for some reason, something about it, I actually really love that pack. And it's like not gameplay I normally do at all. So. Well, you know, something that we talk about a lot that I don't know if we've ever shared is we think a lot about how to make those little moments that feel like a moment you would want to have in real life. Mm. I think that seems oversimplified, but like Cats and Dogs and Parenthood both sort of had this angle of like, I want it to be the things that I would take a picture of in real life of my pet, right? I want that cute little moment of my cat doing something goofy or my dog doing something goofy. And parenthood was the same sort of thing. Like, what is a real life moment and feeling that we want to try and capture yeah. of what it means to be a parent? Um, and I think it did a really good job of that. Um, so one thing that I personally always bring up, and I know a bunch of other builders in the community do as well, is that sometimes we just don't have enough swatches in the game. Yeah. And obviously, I know like there's a hard limit on them, but some items, like the, I think there's some base game counters that were updated have like thousands of them. Well, like 20-something tw <laughs> 20 swatches, I think. Um, and I guess on top of that, it's, it's also the whole swatch system, compared to Sims 2, you know, where you had the separate swatches and all that, 
it's just like with certain items, like a bed, for example, having the wood frame tied in with the sheets, it's is like super frustrating. it makes it really difficult. Yeah. So basically, this is not even really a question. This is me just wanting <laughs> it. I, just yeah. like when you add new items, I think sometimes that's maybe not considered as much as it should be. Like some items get added in with three colors or none. None, I never understand. I just don't understand why it would come with zero color choices. Like, Totally fair question. I don't know the answer to, actually. Um, yeah, you know, it is it is another one of those cases. Uh, I, I totally agree. Like, when I go and try and build stuff on my own and I can't find the thing that matches, it's super annoying. Um, I recently moved, and I was trying to build the houses I might move mm. into, and I couldn't make things that were correct. Um, and I think I sent a laundry list to someone on the <laughs> team. Um, so, yeah, we totally have the same thing. Uh, it isn't... It isn't that it's not thought of. I think sometimes things do get missed for some reason, right? Like, we are still human. We make mistakes. So it may mean that a particular plan that we made for an mm. object forgot to call something out. Um, sometimes we catch them and when we're going through and yeah. we fix it before it goes out there. And sometimes we catch it and fix it later. Um, but we, we certainly hear you. And we definitely want to try and address them where we can. Because um, usually we can if we can fit it in somewhere. So it's a, it's a hard one. It, I think there's a worry of making every object have a million versions and they're all too similar. Like, if you look at the swatches, like, how do you tell the difference between this slightly different white one and this slightly different white mm -hmm. one? And are they all supposed to be the exact same white? So there's some consideration of that. Um, so, yes, the freedom that, of what that we That doesn't had... excuse zero swatches on no, our it's like, No, oh. for sure. That's a weird one, actually. <laughs> like, I um, I don't know why we would do that either. I, I'm sure there's a reason. I it, doesn't, it doesn't happen as often <laughs> anymore, but there's some, like, older items... Yeah. That, that were just like, this nothing. is what it is. Yeah. Hmm. Um, and I think just on hmm. that point as well, I'll just say new rule, minimum of at least five swatches. Okay. <laughs> that Going forward. It, that should be the rule? Well, I can certainly ask. I'm just going to put that out. That's the new rule. <laughs> No, it just it's it really is it's just a shame like because you get these really cool new items and yeah. I'm like I just wish there was this one more color or like more I could do with it. Okay. Especially um, just some very stylized items like those yeah. typically need to have like a more standard or basic color. You swatch. know, so it's funny that is like the one thing that I say in almost every concept art review that I ever get to go to is when I see something with a really cool pattern. I'm like, where's the plain version? <laughs> so yeah, the, we do talk about that. We love the patterns. Yeah. But we also need absolutely. So I can use it in my regular house absolutely. too. Absolutely. <laughs> well, I'll definitely I'll bring it up. I'll continue to poke at it. I haven't been able to go to as many art meetings lately, so mm. but I'll keep asking. So I guess uh, talking about um, I guess almost like family style gameplay and mm -hmm. all that. One of the big sort of ongoing discussions throughout The Sims 4 has been story progression. You know, yes. other Sims in the world having lives and not just ending up a ghost town yeah. a few generations down the line, which I think my Super Sim Let's Play, I think almost 50 of my friends are just ghosts now. And it's like, oh, wow. The, the town is just dead. Like, there's new Sims coming in, but even still, like, they're always still single. There's not really <laughs> anything going on. You know, like, it's just something that people liked because it gave more life and more story in the background that's going on and it made everyone's game a bit different because if you start yeah. a new game now like it, both save games are going to be the same when you start up like there's no real difference unless i go yeah. in and change little bits and pieces yeah so uh, i'm gonna ask you a question in that regard because this, this is an interesting topic we debate a lot mm -hmm. um we've done a lot of different versions of this throughout generations of the sims right so in sims 2 because you didn't have the whole world continuing at the same time yeah. We had these preset stories that you could play when you started a family, right? You could play a certain thing with the Goths. You could play a certain thing with the Pleasants. Um, and they were, I thought, really cool as, like, a jumping-off point. But then everybody else really didn't advance with you. But in Sims 3, we got to the point that as soon as you started a game anywhere, everything kind of went off the rails. <laughs> anyone could go anywhere they wanted. Um, which for me and my personal play style was a little bit more frustrating because I was like, no, I wanted to make you best friends. Yeah. And now you're like, I don't even know what happened to you. <laughs> um, and so Sims 4 is a different take in that regard. Like you, like you said, it is not creating the same amount of uh, differentiation in Sims 3. So I... I don't, I don't know the right answer because they all went in different directions. And you're right, I, I definitely hear people asking yeah. for story progression. But um, in, a, in a world that, like, let's just say in a hypothetical land that we, we've done whatever we wanted, do you think all those can coexist? Like, do you think I could let you play an interesting starting off This point? was another question I had for you. Okay. And this sort of goes back to the ability to enable and disable features in a game. Ah. So, and I think Sims 3 had some of those options by the end for story progression. Yeah, we were able change. to introduce a few. So, like, that kind of, like, when new features are added, maybe some things that players don't necessarily want. Like, uh, Seasons added a few with the weather. You could turn yeah. off a few things here uh, and there. Fame did too, right? Get famous. Uh, yeah, so you could turn off Sims automatically getting famous. I think that would be something that would be important to Indirect, so that you could have point. the full automated 
thing going on in the background, or if you wanted everything as it was, you just turn you it off. You can turn that off. Yeah, that, and then that might be, be a good choice to just between. put it in your hands. Because I think that, while obviously it would be more complicated to make happen, is more at the core of The Sims. It's like, yeah. I can make it do what I want it to do. Yeah. Rather than the game making me play how it which wants way, me to play. Which way do you play? Like, which way do you I like do would it? want, because I, pl I play one household at a mm -hmm. time. So at my place, I, I want everyone else to do their own thing and get oh. going. Because my world, uh, there's nothing else going on in it. It's the same. So, like, yeah. I would like to have every Switch turned on. <laughs> uh, so my flip of that is I also play, like, one thing at a time, mm -hmm. but I actually just don't even care what anyone else is doing. Because <laughs> I'm like, I'm just doing but, my thing. Yeah, see, my problem with that is, like, I always have the same friends. I was like, oh, I know Bella, I know more. <laughs> I want, like, different That's people. That's fair. That's a good point. Like, my Sims are just usually loners, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, that, that's, so I mean, that's how I choice. look at it, and I think, yeah, a lot of the community just, you know, it's always a discussion that comes up throughout yeah. the years here and there. It, it does here, too. I mean, I think, again, to just validate, like, that is the thing we debate a lot, and we have different designers who sort of argue for different points of view on that a lot to try and come up with the, how can we address all of that? Um, I think options is certainly a good way to go, right? But then how do we make sure people understand what they do and do not do, right? What are those impacts? Mm. So um, it's something that... I definitely don't feel like we have the perfect answer, and we we agree that what what Sims 4 does is probably not the only way to go about it. Um, we've done these other ways before, so we're still we're still talking about it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know how you got that down to only a few questions. I'm impressed. <laughs> Well, 1,300 questions I have to I, go I was reading along your tweets and responses just to be prepared for this, and I was like, oh, dear, how I, am I going to answer I mean, these? I, I cut out a lot of them, obviously. <laughs> so this, is a, this, this sort of uh, goes back to customization of The Sims. Mm -hmm. Obviously... Any Sims game, everyone compares it to the last one. Sims 3's big things are, you know, open world, create a style tool. Mm -hmm. So just on that point, obviously with cats and dogs, we've got a color wheel for pets. Yes. And while that's great, I don't think anyone's complaining about that. I think people wanted to know why that sort of color wheel is not possible for other stuff. And it, for me, pers this is me saying it, not the people. I think it's almost like a little tease. It's like, yeah, we can do it, we can do it here, <laughs> but you can't do it anywhere else. You know, like, so, the, you know, I just want to hear a bit more about that and why partially we made some choices when we started the game that meant that we were building content in a certain way and building objects in a certain way and trying to make sure that the game ran better five mm. years in than it did for oh, Sims 3. Let, let me be clear. Create a style tool. I don't want that. Have you tried <laughs> to use that at all in the last couple of years? If you go into the game, you hit that button, the game will just like lag and then like 30 seconds later be like... Whoa. Mm -hmm. Oh, now you can color yeah. stuff. It's awful. It's yeah. terrible. Well, so, again, <laughs> that's another one of those cases where we've kind of been all over the spectrum, right? So Sims 3 was just like, fine, do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. um, Sims 4 is like, nope, you get, like, five things, or maybe none. And <laughs> Sims 2 had kind of an interesting combo where I could at least change part of it separately from See, another that's part. I like. Like, I would have been happy yeah. with that, you know? Like so, yeah. It, so if I designed sort of my perfect mm -hmm. version, it's something more like that where I get to design the different pieces, but then there's a, there's a little more flexibility. Maybe not the whole color wheel, but, like, a little more of a spectrum. Yeah, you know, um, like... You, you open up like a photo editing program that has like a set yes. number of like standard yes. color swatches. Or yeah. like a hue shifter, right? Mm -hmm. Which you can do too. Um, and I feel like there's that middle zone that would feel better. Now, how could that ever exist in Sims 4? I, it can't, which I know is not the fun answer. But mm -hmm. um, question back to you then. Like if we were able to create something that let you do it on a certain subset like pets, would that be satisfying? Because I feel like no, based on what I hear people telling me. But am I wrong? Like, if we were able to say, hey, we can't give it to you on everything, but here's a shirt that you could do this to, mm. or, like, here's um, a suite of furniture you could do it to, but you can't do it to everything. See, that I, feels yeah. like salt in the wound I was going to say that I think that feels worse. I think with yeah. pets, it's okay. Because it's, because so it's a whole separate? New, yeah, a whole new separate thing. And I don't think anyone's complaining about that with pets. Correct me. You Let me know in the comments if you are complaining about that. But I don't think anyone's complaining about the creativity that that allows. But it's the, I want it on all the other parts. Yeah. Yeah. And... From obviously what I understand is even when you guys did the gender update, you had to go back through all the yes. stuff you'd already created yes. and re you know, fix it up and change it to the new system, which would be exactly the same for every clothing item and every piece of like object in the game. Yeah. So I understand that to be a huge amount of work, but yeah, it's just something that it is a bit of a shame that it's not possible to do that kind of thing. It, it, it almost seems to me like Sims 2 was like, we got customization, and then Sims 3 is like, whoa, this is what we can do. Yeah. We went too far, let's go back. Yeah. And it's like, just gone too far back, maybe. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, that is that is part of the hard part of game development, right? Mm -hmm. Is you're trying to figure out what things to do, and you can't do everything bigger, better, faster, 
on every vector, right? Because yeah. it's just, um, it, well, and it leads to problems, right? Like, we knew that Sims 3 had trouble with performance, <laughs> not even sh not even five years in, like, even shortly no, in, it, it got was, slower and slower. Yeah. Um, and, I mean, I love Sims 3, I love what we did, but that was something that we very consciously set out to do in the beginning of Sims 4. Like, no, this game has to run much better yeah. for way more machines for way longer because we have so much more we want to do with it. Mm -hmm. But that meant some really hard trades. And so we've been looking for ways to introduce more of that but um, I know it's not exactly what it used to be. So that's, that's a hard one to reconcile. I don't have yeah. a great answer other than, like, we um, made some yeah. choices. And we, uh, that's why we were super excited to do it for pets. But I totally get why that's yeah. difficult. And actually, Jill, like, SimGuru Jill could tell you we debated it for a long time because she was really worried about that. And I was like, but it's really good. We should yeah. share it. So it's, um, you know, it's a hard one. Yeah. And I think that sort of just ties back in with color swatches and that. That's yeah. why we need yeah. more of them with yes. everything that comes yes. out. Like, and that, that is a more... That is a more practical path for, for TS4 to take, is like, how do we just make sure that the swatches we do offer feel um, like they cover a pretty decent spectrum? It's never yeah. going to be the same freedom, but how could we make that feel better? And I think something that would be good on that point is like, uh, sometimes in game updates, you've just almost seemingly randomly just added new colors to stuff. <laughs> like, I don't even think half the time it shows up in the patch notes. So we'll Probably go, not. We just go in the game, like, oh, we got new colors for something. Like, yeah. I think that's, like, great, because there's some stuff in the game that's just like, why is this missing a swatch or something like that? Yeah. So, well, maybe we can get better at least uh, about telling you we did it. Because <laughs> <laughs> like, even if you miss something, it'd be great if you go back and just add the colors to that yeah. that we're missing, because, yeah. um, like, counters were an example of that. There was, like... I think there was a few at the start, and now there's like 25 or something colors on that. Like, it, it went up massively at one point. Yeah, I don't know exactly why, but um, I know counters are really hard to make because there's so many pieces. So yeah. I think there's a lot of like, well, this one needs a million colors so that we don't have to try and make one slightly yeah. different for a little while. And on that point, actually, vampires are added new counters, but only added three colors. Ugh. And because we don't get kitchens often. Weren't they like, all just like colors. moody and dark Yeah, they all really yeah. dark. It was like dark brown, <laughs> dark green. I was like, ugh. Yeah, and yep. I've never used it since. But, mm. um, I don't think I've ever. But on a those. lighter note, <laughs> what are your three favorite packs from this? If you were like, Ooh. I got to pick. This is just me playing my own time. I got to pick three packs I want to play. Ma oh, maybe one expansion, favorite. one stuff pack, one game. Yeah, pack. like one of each of the things. Yeah. Um, okay, well, I um, I think my favorite expansion. I'm just gonna say cats and dogs. It's just too dogs. cute. It's just, I mean, I have cats. I love my cats. Um, and my sister has a dog, so it's fun to play with them. And it's just. Like, for me, it's just a super warm, fuzzy moment that I super love. And I, like many other people, yeah. I super like the world. It's really pretty. Um, but I really just like having the animals in my house. It just adds a different sort of life. In fact, like, when I played it really early, the first thing that happened was, like, a cat jumped up on the table and just stared at my Sam while he was eating. And I was like, we're done! Ship it! <laughs> like, they're done! They're perfect! Um, it just felt so nice to, like, yeah. see this really mundane moment. Um, let's see. On the game pack side, I think I really like... I mean, this is just current. I really like Strangerville. It's because it's so different. Like yeah. it's just a totally different way to play. And we just did kooky stuff. And I love how um, how goofy some of the assets are and the characters we made. And I really actually liked how we uh, even announced it and rolled it out because I thought that was just. Different. I yeah, I was speaking about that the other day actually. So the if you guys haven't seen it, I'll link it down below. The, it was the release trailer, I think specifically, where they had the sort of voice acting and they really gave a really good background story to yeah. Erwin uh, and. I've forgotten the other Sims name now. But anyway, they gave a really good background story with voice acting. And I was saying, I think that is a really good way to announce almost any... Pa I don't know. Let me know what you guys think down below. Yeah. But I like the idea of it because it gives the characters that come with the pack a whole story and a voice as well. Like yeah. We've had, obviously, the main Sim in previous trailers, but yeah. they've not really had a proper story. And because traditionally gameplay trailers have just been a voice, I was like, and now you're going to go over here yes. and do this and pick up this thing. Yeah. Whereas the Sims having that story... Almost lets you jump into the game being like, oh, there's that sim. I know what they're doing and what they're trying to work out. Like, I don't know. It made me really excited. Uh, yeah, I agree. When I first saw the first saw them, I felt the same way. I was like, ooh, this feels different. I really like how it's, like, explaining what's happening here. So that was cool. Uh, and my stuff pack. We've got so many of them. What's my favorite one? Um, I really like the movie Hangout stuff. Is that what it ended up being called? Yeah. With I the screen so. and the stuff. Um, I can check. Oh, Yeah. Uh, I think, yeah, there we yeah, go. Yeah, movie hangout stuff. Um, I don't know why. Mostly, I mean, I love movies, so that's probably why. And a popcorn machine is, like, all I need in my real life. But um, there was that tree that had, like, lights hanging from it, I think is, like, my favorite object we've ever made, which is really dumb. <laughs> like, I, I no, really I love it. I, was, I actually really love that, but I'm so upset because I can't... I, 
I can't really use it most of the time. No, I, I know, but it's so cool. I, used, like, I used it recently, like I specifically built like a little deck for it and yeah. all that, and I put the tree in the middle. It's like it's cool. It's I really think cool. it's because it's what like I wish I could put in my real backyard. So <laughs> yeah, I just yeah. really, really like that. Um, so I really liked that SP. I don't know it, the style of it was just really cool mm. for me. Danielle asked a pretty okay. open-ended question. Ooh. And I thought this is a good one to sort of start wrapping things up a little bit. Where, where do you personally see the Sims franchise going? So not just the Sims Four, but like overall, like what do you want to see out of the Sims franchise? Like, well, that's a good question because I think about this a lot, um, and I think I said at the beginning I live in the future, so this yeah. is what I think about. Do you want it on a every lot of platform, time. and you want hundred DLCs um, for the game, uh, all in hundred dollars yes, each? Definitely for sure. No. <laughs> That's not how I think about it at all. Um, what I think is super interesting about The Sims, and has been for a long time, is the way that it connects with people. Like, you can play The Sims in so many different mm. ways, right? You can be a builder. You can make Sims. You can tell stories. Um, you can use it to recreate things. Like, I love that it can be so many different games to the same person at different times in their life or just to different players. And um, I love our community. Like, that's going to sound like pandering to you. It's totally not. I actually love how much people are invested in where this game is going and what this game should be. So when I think about what I want to see in the future, it's how do we how do we connect all of that all of that meaning and all of that interaction with the game more directly. I mean, like you guys do an amazing job of doing it on your own, right? You're making your streams and your YouTube channels and your Twitter conversations and your fan pages. How do we help you connect to even more of the other people out there who want to do the same things that you do? Mm -hmm. um, and how do we not recreate all of it, right? I don't want to rebuild Twitch. Twitch is great at what it does. But like, how do I help make it easier for you to connect to the people who are doing the same thing that you are yeah. who maybe haven't found you yet? Um, which I think is just really neat because it's just a game that that helps you feel, I don't know, like you're doing something cool and different, but there's other people doing it with you. I um, think that, that would be one vector I'm super interested in. I think that's also really special because back in the day with like Sims 2, uh, Sims 1 even, you know, all those early games, it was a much more closed off environment. Yeah. So there was modding online, you could post stuff, yeah. but because now of social media, streaming and YouTube and all that kind of stuff, yeah. it's so much more public because I remember growing up and I didn't know anyone that played The Sims, like, or at least no one spoke about it. Right. It was like... It was so like taboo. Right. You couldn't right. talk about it, but now it's such this huge like thriving community. That's, yeah, it's great. And I think that 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 is exactly right. But there's still vibes of that. There's still people who feel like they're just kind of doing it on their own, and that sometimes that's cool. But sometimes it's like I wish I had someone to talk also, to. So. There's like preconceived like notions about The Sims from yeah. a lot of people still, which is just not true. Yeah. So you know, I think that's yeah. great. I think that's great to hear. Um, oh, I have uh, one video question Ooh, that good. was sent in. Hi. Hi James, how are you? You guys are looking really, really nice today. Um, anyway, sorry, I'm just like a massive, big, avid fan of The Sims 4, so I did have a question. I love The Sims, so if you would like to subscribe to my channel, oh, it's no, YouTube. No, 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 sorry. That's not a question. Don't do that. We love you too. <laughs> oh, well, speak for yourself. I do. <laughs> so I think my audience would be pretty upset. Uh, if I didn't ask you about the whole My First Pet stuff thing, because on my channel, it's pretty clear that I don't like it. I don't have it installed in my game. So please explain that pack to me. What, what happened? Okay. 